Hello, everyone. Welcome in. You're going to get started here in just a minute or so. Um, feel free to let us know where you're tuning in from in the chat here. We'd love to love to see where you're coming in from. Like I said, we'll get started. Just let a few more people join in before we before we kick off here. All right, West Palm Beach, Florida, Marietta, Rhode Island. Oh, from Just Dance, very cool. Honolulu, Buffalo, from Charleston, awesome. Martinsville, Alaska, Charlotte, Iowa. All right, we've got folks from all over the place here today. Well, we are at one o'clock here, so I'm going to get started. I want to welcome you all to another Jack Carpet Dance check-in point webinar. If we haven't met yet, my name is Mason. I'm the content marketer here at Jack Carpet Tech, part of our marketing team. And I want to thank all of you for carving out some time and your busy schedules to be with us today. Uh, today, we will be presenting how to elevate your recital and performance processes presented by Joe Naftal. Now, before we get started, I do want to cover a few housekeeping points. Uh, the first being, if you can, please try to make sure to stay in the room for the duration of the session. This will help prevent any issues with rejoining, uh, and that way you'll be able to catch every moment of the presentation as it happens. Uh, the next, we would encourage you to eliminate any additional distractions. So go ahead and silence your phones, turn off those email notifications, and buckle in for just a little bit with us uh, so you can take in all the information ahead. Uh, finally, uh, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to drop them into the chat as we go along. We may be able to get to some as we go, but we will have a dedicated time at the end of the presentation uh, dedicated to Q&A. So with that taken care of, I'd like to introduce our speaker for today, Joe Naftal. A serial entrepreneur, Joe is a second generation dance studio owner, brand and marketing expert, technology guru and educator. By his mid-20s, Joe had founded seven arts companies that operate across North America, Europe, and Australia, including Check and Point, Penny Prima, Studio Systems Club, and Stand By in the Wings. He's a published author, a production designer for theater and dance, a member of the board of directors for two large arts organizations, and an adjunct professor of theater design. A product of arts education and a staunch advocate of business in the arts, he is committed to helping studio owners realize their dreams and grow their businesses into the future. So without further ado, take it away, Joe. Thank you, Mason. I'm so excited to be with everyone today. Recitals are my absolute favorite thing to talk about. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit why that is. Um, but like Mason said, um, I'm Joe, I'm a dance studio owner. Uh, I'm a production designer for theater and dance. So recitals, performances, production is everything I do. Uh, and I'm so excited to share all that with you guys today. So I'm just going to take a moment here to share my screen so we can get started. All right. Oh, sorry about that. So hi, everyone. My name is Joe Naftal. I'm the creator of Check and Point, which is one of Jackrabbit's integration partners. Uh, before we begin, just wanted to give you a little background on me. I'm a second generation dance studio owner. This is me and my mom, Miss Mary. Uh, and as you can see, I've been involved in the family dance studio business my entire life. In fact, I was born just two weeks before the studio's fifth dance recital. So I like to say I was literally born into the chaos of recital season. Uh, because of this, I've spent a lot of time looking at various pain points for dance studios and figuring out new ways we could solve them. So today I want to talk about some ways we can elevate our recitals and our performances and, and those processes behind them. And I think a good place to start is why we might want to do that. So first is that performances are our time to show off for our dance families and the community. It's the thing that we're working for all year long. Uh, and it's that, you know, it's that graduation, it's that end of year, it's that thing for us to be able to show everyone all of the good stuff that our dancers have been doing, that our faculty and that our staff have been doing. It's time to show off to all of them. Next is that performances are one of the only touch points that some family members will have with the studio. Uh, if we think about parents that maybe just drop their dancer off at the studio, maybe we have a closed lobby and they're just dropping off right at the door. Or even if we do have uh, one parent coming into the lobby or coming into the studio regularly, 
maybe, you know, the other parent isn't coming in or other decision makers in that household aren't coming to the studio all of the time. So our recitals, our performances really do form the point of view and the judgment that a lot of those people in that house might have about that studio and a lot of those that might be decision makers on if we come back to the studio next year or if we want to add on that extra class and that extra costume. Recitals are a huge financial consideration for many studios because it can be the difference between a profitable and unprofitable studio. There's many studio owners I've talked to that, you know, the studio might just be, you know, charging along throughout the year. You may not totally be making it, but that recital, that costume order, that really makes the difference between us being in the black and being in the red. Um, and it's also an opportunity for us to upsell, cross-sell, add things on. So we want to make sure that our recital is viewed in a way that makes it really easy for us to add stuff on, uh, make all those extra upsells, extra things, um, go off without a hitch too. Uh, and the last thing, this sentence I think is so important when we think about recitals and the decisions we make around recitals, is that people remember the last thing. They remember the last experience they had with your business. So they could be going along the entire year, be having great classes, having a great experience with the studio, loving their teacher, loving your staff, and then they have a really negative recital experience or something was hard or it was hard to, you know, the parking outside was, was annoying. Something like that could ruin that whole experience and all that good we did all year long. So it's so important that we make sure that we have a really good polished, uh, not just end of your show, but end of year experience. Uh, because those people thinking, am I going to come back next year? Am I going to add on that class? Do I want to try something else? That's that last taste in their mouth that they're going to have about our business. So we want to make sure that that's really where, uh, you know, we hit them with, with all we've got to make sure that we impress them. Uh, and lastly, we want to elevate our processes so we can make things easier for ourselves and for our staff, because of course we want that. Yes, please. Yes, please make things easier, especially as we're in the midst of rhinestone costumes and getting scenery onto the truck and, and all of that extra stuff. Anything we can do to make stuff easier for us is good as well. Uh, in addition to making sure that we have a great experience for our dance families. So talking about that recital show, I really want to talk about where does that show begin? What are we talking about when we talk about the show? Because off the bat, you'd think, okay, the show starts when that curtain rises and the show ends when that curtain comes down after the, the finale, right? And I really think that that show begins much sooner than that. The entire recital show experience performance really includes every interaction and process that's involved with the performance that affects a dancer and a parent. So that could be everything from their communications and newsletters, their costume orders, the costume receiving, uh, the ticketing, uh, how they chose the ticket, how they paid for their ticket, how they got all of that in, uh, things like parking outside. Was it, was it a pain to, to drop uh, their child off and their, their elderly grandparents at the door? Was that a pain? Was it easy? Um, how is it dropping off their, their dancer backstage, checking them in, checking them out after the show? How friendly were the ushers who were showing them to their seat? Uh, did they make it a good experience for them? How was intermission? Was it crazy? Um, you know, and how was picking up their dancer at the end of the show? And they wanted to leave and go to the dining room or go to Applebee's right after. All of those things add up to how great the show is. And then, of course, how entertaining the show was, how much fun it was, and what experience their child had. Did they have a great educa uh, educational once in a lifetime performance experience. All of those things together really affects what we'll call the customer experience and what they remember about the show. So really important that we make things as good of an experience for them as possible so that all of those things lead to them, A, wanting to come back to the studio next year, B, wanting to take another class, and C, wanting to add on some of those extras too. So maybe next year, instead of just bringing, buying four recital tickets, they're gonna wanna buy 10 bring more family members, uh, more friends, all of that good stuff. So really wanted to make sure we give them that best customer experience possible. And today we're gonna focus on, I kind of chose three areas that I think we can easily elevate with Jackrabbit and Check-In Point. Um, not things that are gonna be really hard, not things that I think you really have to change a lot of stuff to do. Things that I think you could look at right now, make a couple little changes and you'll really see some of those benefits uh, and that payoff uh, come your recital season, uh, whether that's, you know, for a holiday show coming up, an end of the year show, or maybe um, in a few months um, in the summertime for us here in North America as well. Uh, so the first one we'll talk about is what we could do before the show with things like pre-orders and pre-signups. 
The second is things we could do during recital week, uh, what I'll call our communication hub. And the third is what we could do during the show and after show time for check-in and check-out. All of those things to elevate those processes and elevate that recital experience for our dancers, for our families, and for our staff. So number one, our first thing is going to be before the show, pre-orders and signups. There are so many things for us to sell, offer, sign up for, all of that stuff during recital season. Things like recital flowers, t-shirts, toys and gifts, program ads, volunteer spots, daddy-daughter dance, all of that good stuff. And if you're not doing any of those, you're missing out. So make sure you add those into your studio as well. But all of that stuff comes with some administration behind it too, keeping track of all of it um, on for us as the studio and then also for the parent, because you know not only do we wanna make sure that the parent buys recital flowers because we wanna make sure we don't miss out on that revenue, but guess what? That parent also doesn't wanna miss out on ordering recital flowers because they want their child to have those recital flowers on show night. So we wanna make it that it's easy that they don't miss out on it and that it's easy for us to track as well. Uh, with all of that, keeping in mind that parents are busy Recital is not the only thing going on for them during that recital season. Uh, they might also be dealing with other end of the year type things like graduation, prom, uh, communions, family barbecues, uh, all these other things going on. And recital is just a little sliver of what's going on uh, in their whole um, timeline. So we need to make it as easy for them as possible so that they don't miss any of these things or they just don't choose to do them because it might just be too hard with all of the stuff they have going on. So one, make it easy. Use easy digital ways to track pre-orders and signups for all of these things. Make sure it's easy for you and your staff to pull a report. So you're not you know, going through a bunch of different order forms and trying to tally them all up. You wanna be able to end your you know, flower orders uh, at you know, 12 o'clock PM on one day and then immediately know how many you have to order with all, out all of that work in between. Uh, some easy ways we could do that. I love using Jackrabbit events for this create an event, even if it's not what we normally think of an event, like a, a paint night or a workshop, we can even just have an event that's recital t-shirts or an event that is volunteer sign up or flowers or anything like that. Easy thing, our parents already know how to go into their parent portal. They already know how to register for an event or a class. So they already know how to do that sort of process to get those extra recital goodies. Uh, and it's already in your Jackrabbit system. Easy way to do that. Other way you could do it is something through like a web form. So some favorites out there, Google Forms, Wufu, Job Forms, Formstack, et cetera. All good ways, make it a really easy one page form, just the information you need, nothing extra. Uh, and then you could even use something like Zapier to zap that information back into Jackrabbit uh, to keep you know Jackrabbit as your sort of central um, point of truth for all of that stuff. Uh, and with that, whether you're using a Jackrabbit event or a web form, uh, make it easy with QR codes around the studio too. Sending a little postcard home with parents so they have that as well. Easy, easy, easy. And my next thing with pre-orders, other than doing those forms, which is of course an easier, easy way to do it, but even easier is this method that I like to call reply to buy. Uh, make it easy for them just to say yes. That's all they have to say. We'll take care of the rest. Uh, a way that we can bill their card on file if we have that information vaulted, either their credit card or their bank account information. Uh, and then we can just send them a quick email or an SMS text message, something like, dear parents, would you like to purchase recital flowers for your dancer? They're $25 for a dozen rainbow roses. Just reply with yes to place your order and we're gonna charge your card on file. All that parent has to do is make one decision. Do I want the flowers? Yes, I click, I type, you know, hit four buttons, I hit reply. I hit type in yes, I hit send, and I'm good to go. And then on our end, we can just add that charge to their account, we can charge their card on file, and we're good to go. So I really love that reply to buy as well, because it doesn't even require them to scan a QR code or click a link or type anything in. They just have to decide in their, in their mind, in their brain, do I want this? Yes, and then moving on. So uh, for things that are a little more complicated, I love that web form or Jackrabbit event. Uh, but things that really just require that, you know, yes or no, uh, I love a reply to buy because, you know, if you test it out on something and you'll see your, your conversion rate will skyrocket um, just because people, it made it easy for them just to make that decision um, super easy. Uh, next is number two, uh, going ahead to during recital week, creating a central communication hub. So show of hands, 
Uh, who's ever heard this from a parent? They say, oh, I didn't get that email. I didn't know when the recital was. I didn't know we had to order costumes. I didn't know we had to buy recital tickets, right? Everyone can say we've we've heard that from a parent. If, if I ever get a tattoo, it's going to say I didn't get the email. It's going to slap right on there because uh, I've heard it so many times. Um, I think the way for us to really combat this is one, having as many communication mediums as we can. Uh, and we know this as educators and as teachers, right? We can't just show how to do a plie one way and, and hope that every student picks it up. We have to kind of come at how to do each dance step from a bunch of different angles because we have different kinds of learners. We have visual learners, we have auditory learners, we have kinesthetic learners. And the same thing is true for our parents. We have all different types of learners and we have all different types of parents that will pick up on all different types of communication. So making sure that that same message reaches them through email, through text, through an app push notification, uh, sometimes even through snail mail, which seems super old, but sometimes it's, you know, we don't get mail anymore. So if you send me a little postcard with a little recital checklist, I'll pay attention to that, uh, maybe as opposed to my email inbox with a thousand unread messages. So making sure we get those messages to people in as many different variety of ways as possible we'll make sure they pick them up. Which leads me next to making sure once they get that notification, they know exactly where to go, making sure that everything is in one place. Uh, and I want everyone to kind of learn this phrase uh, and train it to your staff and have them say, did you check the recital hub? That's the answer back to the parent when they say, I don't know where to buy tickets. I don't know where my costume info is. I don't know if I'm supposed to have uh, a ballet bone or a ponytail. If, you, if the answer is always, did you check the recital hub? They'll know exactly where to go to get those answers. They won't even have to come next time to ask you because they'll know where to go. So I love doing this through our studio's branded mobile app. We have it through Jackrabbit and Mobile Inventor uh, that all of our parents know. They have tons of different ways to you know, pay their bill and register for classes. But uh, most importantly at recital time is our recital hub that we put inside the app. So right here's a screenshot of how we have it set up during recital season. Right under that My Account link, we have one that says Recital Club, everything you need to know for the show. Uh, really easy. They just click that Dance Connection app. It pops up here. They click Recital Hub. And then it brings them to a screen like this uh, that has everything they need. Their practice videos, their recital tickets, their dress rehearsal schedules, their flower order forms. All of anything they possibly could need that needs to do with the recital is on this one screen. They can scroll through it. Um, we just keep adding anything that's recital related onto this page so they know exactly where to go. Uh, and then we link out to whatever forms or, or things they might need. Uh, things that are great about this. It's all in one place. They don't need to go somewhere else or look in a bunch of different emails or in a bunch of different web pages to find it. They know exactly where to go. Two, it gets them to download our app, which we want parents to do. We want them to download the app because then we're able to communicate to them through push notifications, which get to them exponentially more than emails or text messages. So we want that to be on their phone too. So um, we're able to do that. And then also if we're using that as our, again, central point of information for recital, it's easy then for us to use those in-app push notifications to let them know about things like a road closure. So you can't go to the front door of the theater, you gotta go to the back door or, hey, rehearsal's running late today. You know, we're, we're about 15 minutes behind schedule. All of that stuff is so easy to communicate to parents so they know exactly uh, where to go. It's all in that one place. And then number three, things for during and after showtime, which would be check in and check out. And as the person that invented check in point, it's a super important uh, thing for me. And I'll tell you a little bit why. Uh, when I observed recital checking check in happening at our studio, I noticed a few things. We only had 20 to 30 minutes to get everyone signed in backstage. And as the studio grew, we had more and more students to check in, but we still had the same amount of time. So when we first started, we had 20 minutes with 75 students when the studio first started 35 years ago. And now we have 700 students and we still only have 20 to 30 minutes to get students checked in backstage. The show still has to start on time. We can't say, sorry, we're starting 45 minutes late today because it took us a little longer to get people in. Uh, we, just meant that we had to speed that up. We had to make check in and check out go as quickly, as smoothly as it could. So uh, noticing that I created check in point to solve for this problem. With all of the restress of recital every year, it was one thing I really thought we could simplify. Uh, and this is just a little photo of the first prototype that uh, I built and I never really thought other studios were gonna use it. I just built it 
so it could solve a problem for our studio. And then after a while, studios found out about it and wanted to get their hands on a copy. Uh, and now Check In Point has grown into a product that's used by hundreds of studios across North America, Europe, and Australia um, all throughout the year. Uh, so to start off, if you don't know about Check In Point, it tracks which dancers have been checked in backstage and it timestamps when they've been checked in and checked out, as well as who checked them in and who checked them out. It also tracks their medical information and any important alerts. It manages waivers and it allows you to assign dressing rooms. It allows you to message parents. Uh, it lets you know what percentage of dancers have been checked in. Uh, and check-in really becomes one less thing to stress about. Over the years, check-in point has grown from being uh, about more than just sign in and sign out. We've really tried to make it into your backstage information hub. Uh, and we're so excited over the last year or so, we have this new partnership with Jackrabbit uh, where we work together to make recitals even easier for studio owners. Uh, we both know that Showtime is busy and the last thing that you wanna do is sit at a computer, learn a new piece of software, spend hours entering things in that you've already entered into Jackrabbit. So we really tried to work as closely together as we could to make it as easy as possible so that our two platforms could work hand in hand uh, so that we can save you. <laughs> as many, much time, as much stress as we can. Because uh, that's what we want at the end of the day. We want recital season to be easy for you, for your families, and for your staff. So if you start using Check In Point, uh, the first step is importing all of your dancers. Uh, like I said, we you don't want to spend all of those hours re-entering all of that in, retyping stuff in. We get that. Uh, that's why we have some easy importing options. You can import an Excel sheet from your studio management software like Jabrabbit or even easier is that direct integration we have where you can download all the information you need, you can import it into Check In Point in just one sheet. Uh, if you import straight from Jackrabbit, it'll not only import all of your dancers, Jackrabbit's also gonna send over, uh, it'll import your groups or songs, your shows, and assign your dancers to the right groups and your shows uh, and your groups to the right shows in show order. So all of that stuff you set up in Jackrabbit, it's like three button presses and that'll be right in Check In Point right away. Uh, and we get that, you know, you need support too. You're not alone during that process. Our support team is always there to help you every step of the way through setting up your shows, importing your dancers, and you just submit a support ticket and we're with you anytime you need us. Okay, this is the cool, really cool new thing that we did with Jackrabbit. Uh, when it comes to checking in dancers backstage, we just released a new feature where parents can show their QR code in your studio's Jackrabbit Plus app. And you might be like, what QR code? I don't know what you're talking about. I have the Jackrabbit Plus mobile app. I'm going to show you exactly where to find it. It is so cool. So going back to that uh, Jackrabbit Plus mobile app that we have for our studio here uh, on the screenshot, you'll see. Uh, they click My Account, and then they get into their familiar um, parent portal screen. And then they click that menu icon in the top right corner of the screen, and they get to the menu. And you'll see that there's this top uh, menu item that says student QR code. They click that and it will show a QR code for uh, their student or students, if there's multiple students in the family. And then your backstage staff can just scan this QR code and it will check them in backstage. Uh, and then they can scan that same QR code when it's time for the dancer to be picked up. Uh, so this is great for a number of reasons. Your parents already are gonna have this app because you're using it in your studio, you're communicating your recital hub information to them, you're using push notifications to let them know about those delays, about those road closures, all that stuff for the recital. And then right from there, they already have that app set up. So it's super easy for them to show you that QR code and then boop, scan them in backstage, boop, scan them out, making sure that that dancer uh, gets in backstage safely and that, that your check-in staff knows any information they need to know. And also, of course, making sure that that dancer goes back to the right parent uh, or caretaker when they get picked up at the end of the show. Um, what I love about this is it's something that's already in that parent's pocket. They already have that phone. They don't have to download something separate. They're already using your studio's app. Uh, and if they're not, it then also encourages them to download that app. Because like I said, we want as many parents as possible to download that studio app so that we can use those push notification features and give them all of that information right at their fingertips uh, in their pocket. So really, really cool new feature that uh, we're excited to roll out for Check and Point, uh, and I'm just really excited to roll out for our studio too. Uh, something we're also looking at doing um, is uh, doing it in such a way that we have like an express line for our app users. 
uh, kind of like when you go to the airport and there's, you know, uh, if you've ever gone through customs, there's, you know, the express line if you use mobile passport. Uh, this would be sort of the same thing. If you're an app user, you'll go through the express line because all you have to do is go uh, scan your phone and then move right along. And then we'll have a, a regular line for anyone who, who maybe doesn't have the app. Once that QR code is scanned, check-in point is going to show your uh, backstage volunteers, your check-in staff, whoever that may be, any alerts they need to know about. Things like medical information, reminders or alerts, uh, that dancer's personal show schedule, what dancers dances they're in that day in order, their dressing room assignment, costume changes, all of that good stuff. Uh, once that dancer is checked in, the parent will receive a text message letting them know that they've been signed in backstage. Parents love getting these texts. It shows that your backstage area is organized and that they have nothing to worry about during the show. So like I said, doing that check-in with the app, speed it up, speed up your drop-off and pick-up line. Many parents already have access to that app and QR code. You can set up that express drop-off and pick-up line. You can encourage them to download the app. And again, more app users equals easier communication year-round with your parents. Uh, if you don't have a studio app or if a parent hasn't downloaded the app, that is okay too. You can still sign them in using the main check-in screen or print your emailing barcodes from check-in point to send to parents. Uh, on this screen, each dancer is highlighted as soon as they're signed in or out, and each sign in or out activity is time-stamped. Check-in point doesn't just track your dancers, it could also track your volunteers or backstage staff too. You can assign them to specific shows and even to specific areas for each show such as to the stage crew, to be an usher, or to help in dressing rooms. It can also track which groups or songs each dancer is assigned to. Groups can be added to the shows in show order. And for each group, you can also add a group photo, such as the costume photo, and upload group documents. Uh, for example, I like to upload the class's costume instructions as documents so that any staff member or volunteer backstage can quickly pull it up and see, you know, does the bow go on this side of the head or that side and so on. Really easy information at everyone's fingertips when they need it. The group can also track the class's rehearsal and photo times and production notes such as lighting, sound, set prop, video, and costume notes. Uh, next to each, each dancer's name is a purple button that says dancer info. When you click that, it pops up a box that will show you their information, their entire sign-in and sign-out history, what groups they have in this show, in show order with a photo of the costume. So when you have that dancer that runs off stage and doesn't know which dance they have next, it's easy to type in their name, look up their individual show schedule and say, okay, go get on your blue costume. That's what you have next. Uh, you can see what dressing rooms they're assigned to for costume changes. Uh, and you can also message individual parents right from the check-in screen. So if Sally isn't feeling well or Timmy forgot his gloves, you can send a text message to the parent within seconds. Uh, one of my favorite features of the check-in screen are the progress bars that you'll see right in the center of the screen here. You can easily see how many dancers have been checked in backstage. If it's only 11%, like it shows here, okay, we're not nearly ready to start the show. But once we get up to 97, 98%, we click that red view missing dancers button to see who we're missing and we track them down. We then don't worry in the middle of the show that we're missing a dancer, only to find out that they never arrived in the first place. You could also have parents sign any liability waivers you need right on the device. For example, in my studio, we use this as a jewelry waiver. So if any dancer arrives with earrings and won't take them out, uh, we have them sign this, but you could customize the waiver as needed. In addition to messaging individual parents, you can also send a message to everyone in a group, dressing room, or show. For example, you could message a dressing room that has someone left their costume behind, stuff like that. And in addition to your main studio account, you can also assign other users with specific permission sets so you can control what they have information to, such as parent volunteers. If they don't want to have information access to all the information, you can say only show them this stuff in their account. And throughout the year, you can also track your to-do list for things you need to do before the show, or even a checklist of things to do on show day. Uh, and for all of our friends at Jackrabbit, we give everyone a free demo. Uh, just go to checkinpoint.com slash jackrabbit, and you can get signed up there to see how everything works. Uh, and of course, I'll show you guys, if you have any questions, you can email us at hello at checkinpoint.com. Uh, so we have some time for q and I will stop sharing my screen here. All right. 
Uh, so someone asked, uh, Teresa asked if you can link the prepaid tickets they bought, like through two, two ticks. Uh, I think that was for the recital hub. Uh, absolutely, that's exactly um, what we do. We link out so that they can buy those tickets. Uh, if you're asking for a check-in point, we also do have the ability, if you have a list of all of your tickets, um, we're able to upload that too. We've done that for studios. If you wanna know where a parent is sitting, we take that in from 22Tix or, or whatever ticketing platform you're using as well. Uh, someone says, my phone says I can't install check-in point. Not sure what the issue is. Of course, reach out to support and we'll, we'll help you figure that one out. Uh, is there a promo code if we decide to sign up for check-in point today? Check that uh, checkinpoint.com slash jackrabbit and we'll, any sort of offers will be posted on there as well. Uh, Brenna asked how much. It's $149 per year for check-in point, uh, regardless of how many students, how many shows you have. It's just that yearly cost. So you can use it for your holiday show and your spring recital. You can use it for nursing home uh, performances throughout the year. Uh, some students use it for competition dress rehearsal or photo day. Anything you have, it's all in there for $149 uh, US uh, per year. Samantha asked uh, how to get it. Great question. Just head over to checkinpoint.com slash jackrabbit. And that will also give you uh, access to sign up right away or to even get a demo. Uh, Lisa asked, uh, we currently use Sign Up Genius for our volunteers. Is there a way to connect that to Check-In Point through Zapier? Absolutely, Check-In Point is on Zapier. So uh, if another app is on Zapier, you can absolutely connect it with Check-In Point. Uh, question regarding texts. We all know how well texting has been going. Is this actually texting versus push notifications? Totally get that. Uh, I totally get the, the pain that uh, A2P uh, 10 DLC has caused, absolutely. Um, so two things with that. I know it's painful, but it's it's gonna be okay. It's gonna get better. Uh, I've been dealing with those registrations uh, for check-in point and for a couple other things. And once you get through it, there's definitely a light on, at the other end of the tunnel. Uh, and for check-in point, uh, you don't necessarily have to, to set up a separate 10 DLC. Uh, it will work right out of the box as well. So um, uh, either way, there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel, but um, it is all good to go right with texting uh, as soon as you start off with that. Um, Tina asked what studio I'm with. Uh, my studio is Dance Connection in Islip, New York, lidanceconnection.com. Uh, Teresa asked, I mean, scanning tickets at the door. Uh, so we don't integrate with scanning tickets at the door. Um, we more handle the behind the scenes, getting dancers um, in backstage and stuff like that. Um, I think those are all the questions. Did I miss any? Uh, when filtering messages, is anyone who hasn't arrived get messages? Yes. So even if they haven't arrived, you're still able to message them. Uh, someone asked if Check-In Point is already a part of Jackrabbit or it's an additional purchase. It is a separate platform, but we work closely with Jackrabbit to make it as easy as possible to have those integrations going back and forth uh, so that you're not sitting there and, you know, putting all of your information to Jackrabbit and then retyping it all into Check-In Point. We try to work closely to make it as easy as possible so that they work hand in hand. Uh, can you change dressing rooms throughout the weekend? All of our shows are different. Absolutely. Uh, dancers can be assigned to uh, one dressing room for the first show and a different dressing room for the second show um, or all that. They could even be assigned to multiple dressing rooms um, for a single show if maybe they dress in, in different places at different points during the show. Uh, what do you need to scan the QR code? Do I need additional software? Uh, nope, so Check-In Point uh, runs uh, either in a web browser on your computer, tablet, or um, or phone device, and it can use your camera that's uh, attached to that device, like your phone or your, your iPad or tablet. Uh, we also have an iOS and Android app that you can download. Um, it, it just makes it easier. It's the exact same uh, as the web app. It just launches within an app uh, if you'd like to go about it that way. Uh, but no extra software or device is needed. You just use that camera that's pre-installed on your device. Uh, how many users can be logged in per event? Is there a limit? Absolutely not. Uh, it's all cloud-based, so all of your information is stored in the cloud. So if you sign in a dancer on device one, 
Uh, as soon as you refresh the screen on device two, it's going to show that dancer as checked in. Uh, and included in your subscription is, is as many users as you need. Uh, so we have some studios that just have one user account with one iPad in the front checking people in. Uh, we have other, you know, super user studios that have 30 or 40 um, users all logged in at the same time. Uh, they might have, you know, five people checking people in at the front, uh, so they make that line go super quick. And they might have stage managers using the app to track production notes. They might have a, a dressing room manager tracking costume changes all in different areas. So as many users as you need, all included. Uh, Adriana asked, uh, the 149 is per year. That's exactly right. It's a yearly subscription, 149 US. Uh, could you tell us how you check in 700 dancers in 20 to 30 minutes? Uh, so we do run multiple shows. So we don't throw all 700 into that one show. We do divide it down uh, into multiple shows. Uh, but we do it very quickly by having them come in, either searching their name or, or scanning uh, their barcode, uh, giving our staff that information, and then having them go uh, right along uh, to backstage. We usually check in with about four to five people uh, from that line. So uh, it really is like a 30 second check in process um, from the technology side. Uh, they walk up, we either search their name or scan it. We have the information we need, and then they're ready to go on. Uh, and then we usually have like an assistant teacher or another uh, volunteer that can take them from that check-in station to get them back. So, uh, you know, there's still usually that, um, you know, if, if, a, if a dancer is upset or upset leaving mom or has questions, we have some other people that can deal with that so that we can keep moving that line along uh, with that only a couple seconds per parent and then moving them in. Uh, can we see what staff person check them in? Uh, yeah, as long as they have different user accounts, which you can set up, you can see which user account signed them in. Uh, how does the check-in QR code work with families with multiple dancers? Do they have a code per dancer? Yeah, when you go into your Jackrabbit Plus mobile app and you go to your QR code, it will show one QR code for every student that's on that account. So if they have only one student, it'll show one QR code linked to that one dancer. If they have 10 students, it'll show 10 QR codes. Uh, linked to each of those dancers. Uh, what is the total cost of having the app and check-in point? Uh, check-in point I can answer for you is uh, 149 uh, per year. And then if you want to learn more about the Jackrabbit app, talk to the Jackrabbit Plus team and they can get you all on board and, and set with that too. I think I might have hit all of them. Mason, let me know if I missed any questions or or throw them in the chat. Oh, someone asked. Can you explain the um, onboarding process? Can you hold my hand? Absolutely, we will definitely hold your hand through that. Uh, you get access to our support center, which gives you uh, videos and help articles on how to do all of those things. Uh, within the app, you have um, a guided tour that shows you like click here, add this, uh, as you go through it with those sort of in-app notifications. And then you have our support team. Um, and if that means us, you know, asking us what you think is a silly question, we've heard it a million times and we'll answer it for you. Um, or if it's, we need to hop on a Zoom with you to show you how to do something, we'll do that too. Uh, anything it takes to get you guys all set up because we know that it's recital season and we know that we want to make it something that uh, is easier for you, not something that adds on to your to-do list. All right. I think that is it. Uh, that was some awesome information, Joe. Uh, can we get a round of applause emojis in the chat uh, for Joe here, please? It was a fantastic presentation. Um, that does, oh, there it comes. <laughs> uh, that brings us to the end of our presentation today, everyone. Like I said earlier, I saw uh, the question come up a few times. If you want to rewatch this presentation or share it, we will have an on-demand version available within the next 24 hours. And you should get that email to you, but uh, we'll also have it available on our YouTube, which if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to because we post all of our webinars there. There's a ton of help content if you're already a Jackrabbit user or if you're considering joining the family uh, and some other content as well. Uh, as always, if you took away any wins today and you wanna share them with us, or if you just wanna follow us, Tag us in your posts at Jackrabbit Tech on Instagram and Facebook, and you can find Joe at Check In Point on Instagram and Facebook as well. So.
Thank you all once again for being here today. We really appreciate you attending, participating, and sticking with us through technical difficulties. Uh, we hope you'll join us again for our next webinar. So until next time, we hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye, everybody.